Well, it's January 2011 and welcome to Self-Sufficient in Suburbia. Now, if you watched some of our videos last year, you would have seen that they were mainly concentrated on the allotment and in the kitchen. Uh, so this year we're going to do them slightly differently. We're going to be looking at our back garden here at our house in Sunnyside on Tyneside as well. And what we're going to do is a quick tour around the back garden here to show you what the plans are for the garden because at the moment we've used it just for growing uh, flowers and shrubs and not used it for any food production. But we're about to hit it with the changes that we need to bring it into food production. Well one of the big changes we're going to do is to take out some of the shrubs that are using up an awful lot of space. Now here we have a flowering currant bush. It's not a fruit bush, it's just a flowering currant bush. And as you can see it's topped up, um, it's tipped over in the snow that we've just had. So this is going to come out and here we're going to put in a Victoria plum tree. Now we've got a plum tree on the allotment but we're wanting to increase the amount of uh, plums that we're growing so this is going to come out. It'll create a lot of space around here which this is occupying and we'll get a fruit tree installed there. Now if we come round this way <coughs> As you can see there's a lot of shrubbery around here and this will be cut back as well. But somewhere around here we'll be getting the hen house which, uh, and the hens will have the run of the garden but the, the, the chicken coop will go somewhere here. Well that's the first job now done, we've now cut down the flowering currant bush and as you can see it's opened up this enormous amount of space. Now you can see all the, uh, the branches there, they'll go to the allotment and uh, we shall burn them there. Uh, and in the space here we'll put the, the new plum tree that we're planning to get. We've got this flowering shrub here which takes up a lot of space but we're actually going to keep it because it produces some very colourful and attractive flowers but more importantly it produces a lot of berries that the blackbirds and the thrushes in particular rather like so we want to encourage the birds to come to the garden because they eat the bugs as well so that will stay at least for the time being we may prune it back but uh, we'll take that decision later in the year Well, one of the jobs we've got to do on the allotment is to clear out the whole of the greenhouse and uh, get the, um, the windows cleaned up a bit because they are rather mucky and uh, we've also had to shift out all the, uh, the dead plants uh, from here as well. They've just gone onto the compost heap and uh, the grow bags that we had in here we've uh, just emptied on our uh, raised bed where we're going to be putting a polytunnel. Well, one of the things we've done for a number of years now is grow potatoes in bags and they've been very successful and last year uh, in 2010 we had a bit of an experiment after we got the potato crop in in the early autumn we, an we, we planted some more potatoes in bags and uh, we bought them as uh, Christmas potatoes so that we'd uh, have a crop ready for Christmas and as they grew suddenly, suddenly all the plants got eaten by some kind of bug and we just assumed that uh, the, uh, this was a complete failure. Uh, now I've dragged away two of the bags already just to empty out the compost onto the raised bed and suddenly found that they were full of potatoes. So um, with a bit of luck these last two will have uh, potatoes in as well. So we're going to drag this one over to the raised bed and have a go at emptying it out. Right, and uh, it'll probably just be, oh look, that on the one that we decide to film, we'll have nothing in, but uh, here it goes. Oh, I can see, oh, yeah, we've got, we have potatoes. Not very big ones, but uh, yeah, so 
this was uh, Bambino, so uh, the ones that we've uh, got from the other two bags, not particularly massive in quantity, but uh, it's better than the 100% failure that uh, we thought we had. Well, if you saw the videos last year, you know that uh, one of the things that we planted for the first time was Jer Jerusalem artichokes. And although it's January now, we still have a number of crops in the ground. Not many, but still a number in the ground waiting to be picked. And that includes the Jerusalem artichokes. Now, as I say, we've never grown these before. Uh, we've got five plants here uh, that have grown. And uh, we're going to have a go at uh, digging them up. Uh, so we don't know what to expect. We don't know whether these work, but uh, here goes. seem to have. Actually, this has turned out to be not a bad crop. I think we need to be a bit more careful about how we pick them in future because we've managed to slice through a couple of them there. But uh, as you can see, this is just from one plant. We've got another four to go and uh, we've got a reasonable quantity of uh, tubers there. Now, we'll be using these back in the kitchen. We're going to be doing a bit of cooking with these. And the uh, first thing we'll be cooking is a sausage and artichoke casserole. We're just going to give you a quick tour of the allotment and what we're planning uh, this year. Now, obviously, here on bed one, this is the first bed that we created on the allotment when we took it over a few years ago. Uh, we've actually still got some leaks uh, still to be dug up here. and some parsnips as well so hopefully uh, they'll, they'll, they're fine at the moment and they'll last a few weeks longer and then likewise on bed two here ground is absolutely frozen solid so there's nothing much uh, we can do about it but this will be dug over soon Cage. Now, this, as you can see, we've had a pretty awful winter and uh, the snow damage to the roof is quite considerable, so that entire roof is going to have to be replaced. Well, this is bed four and it's one there where we've sort of prepared it in the past but never really sort of uh, <laughs> used it properly. Now, where we are here is the site where the pond is going to go so that's one of the key key jobs we've got for this coming year and we want a pond in because we want frogs on the allotment and frogs eat the bugs and eat the slugs and the snails so they're really useful to have here and then we just pan over to this side this is our raised bed and what we're going to do is put a poly tunnel on here because basically the greenhouse that we have is too small and uh, it's just too crowded in the summer so that uh, polytunnel is again one of the jobs that we need to do this year. Uh, bed 5 is coming along fine it's being used for growing raspberries at the moment um, we've had a bit of a disaster with the sprout crop uh, this year but uh, um, well <laughs> can't expect everything to grow well. Now on that side of the allotment that's the uncultivated part and it's a third of the allotment and again one of the big jobs we've got to do is to get that into cultivation throughout the year. Well the job I'm doing now is to bottle up the gooseberry vodka that I made last year and we've also got a jar of slow gin as well which was, has been waiting to be bottled up. So that's it for us at the end of January in terms of our drive for self-sufficiency. Over the next month, over February, we've got to try and sort out digging our pond, maybe get our chickens, maybe even get uh, some hives and some bees 
and certainly get into the greenhouse and get our seeds growing for the spring ahead of us. So join us again in a month to see how we're getting on in terms of our self-sufficiency. See you then. tonight. I'm going to a bit of it now. Actually, I need a stopper. There, there we go. There we go. Now for the slow gene.